It's fall time. We're going to do some service on the hydro system today. It's been uh, a drought period, so there's not as much uh, water flowing out of the springs. So we're going to basically shut the springs down and uh, clean up the inside of the hydro plant be able to show you the detail of the inside of it. Okay, here we are at uh, spring number two. This is a standpipe here, and you can see it has holes in it to allow water, or allow air, into it when you drain the pipe. So, this is a spring box. I'm gonna open it up. There's my spring water from one of the springs. It goes through this uh, grate here to keep some of the Pine needles and stuff out of it. We're going to shut it off here. Let's take a second. And uh, here's spring number one. Now we're going to shut it off too. You can see the uh, the spring is kind of lined with, or the spring box is lined with rubber to help collecting the water. And uh, works pretty effectively. This little pipe here, we drill a lot of holes in it to keep some of the pebbles and rocks and whatever might flow into it out. And all uh, we're going to do is shut this one off too. So it's fall time here and uh, out of the powerhouse we've got a underground pipe that comes under the ground here and comes out to feed this pond. And uh, you can probably hear the water sort of coming out. That is not the flow. That is a smaller pipe which is inside the bigger pipe and because it takes in water up higher up here it builds up just a little bit of pressure and then comes out with a little fountain type effect and uh, in the winter that keeps the pond from freezing. Of course the spring water never freezes but uh, if you've got active water and you can aerate the water and keep the pond open, then you can raise fish in it. So that's what we do here. We raise trout in this pond that's uh, water that comes out of the hydro system. In the powerhouse here, you get the pipe coming into it here, the blue pipe there. And uh, as you can see, the the pressure is dropping rather rapidly here, but we can increase the flow if we wanted to keep the uh, power going, but we've shut the system down because we're going to take the cover off and uh, take the insides out so you can see the insides of it. And my suspicion is there's some corrosion on the inside of the jet that uh, we clean it up, may get a more efficient jet shape that comes out of it and get better efficiency. The problem is because there's a drought we get less water in the winter and almost so little water that uh, it's hard to run the system. So we're going to try to clean up the efficiency of it and uh, you'll see what's inside here. Okay so inside here you can actually kind of see the uh, jet deflector is in place right there and it keeps the, the jet of water from shooting into the uh, cups which are here. And, uh, and, uh, flashlight. So I'm draining the pipe so that I can take this whole unit out. I'm going to disconnect it here from the turbine system in the box from the housing and also separate it here and I'll pull this whole uh, nozzle unit out. Okay with the uh, sound baffle taken off this is what the whole system looks like. You got uh, just basically a turbine in there with the direct drive system into your generator and the wiring runs up to the some of the control system, but we'll see more of that later. Here you can see that I've taken the jet assembly out 
all together and you can look inside here and see the Pelton wheel and the jet deflector down there below. Here you can see how the jet deflector, when it's out of the way, lets the water through and then it falls and it stops the water from hitting the Pelton wheel. And these cups catch the water and split it on this edge here and it uh, forces the Pelton wheel to spin and uh, because it's spring water we don't have any wear at all on this brass Pelton wheel but uh, this is after 14 years of use so this machine is really a stout machine uh, this is 14 years of continuous use and we've got no problems. Okay, after great effort, I finally got this needle nozzle design disassembled from the unit. And that's the business end of the whole system. That's where it makes the jet. And we're going to open it up and see whether there's scale inside there that's blocking it up changing the shape of the uh, jet or not, not too sure, gonna have to check it out. Okay, I got this held in a vise right here and I got the needle all the way in and you can see this is the this is the part of the tool that really makes the the jet. It's closed all the way now, you can see there's hardly anything but let me take this plate off here uh, that's it's the uh, formation between that and this ray, this needle sharp thing is really 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 sharp and it uh, the water comes in through there and it forms a jet that comes off of there so what I've done is uh, taken a look inside this and there is indeed a lot of scale inside the other metal part I'll open it up and show you so you can see there's a bunch of built up rust material in here on the sides on the inside of the jet and uh, my thinking is that it causes the water to turbo just a bit and uh, when you've got a real low flow of water it prevents it from really uh, giving you a nice clean shape of jet. You can see the needles withdrawn all the way there. Okay, this is a good example of the kind of scale that uh, built up inside of this hydro system for running for 14 years. There's just basically rust and uh, minerals sort of caking on the inside, and that was what was inside of this here. You know, when I took this plate off, uh, inside it's made up of uh, just steel. This is stainless steel, the beak of the um, turbine here. And uh, so what I did was I filed it out, scraped it out as good as I could to make it as smooth as I could so the water has no or very little um, in its way to create any sort of turbulence or a disruption of the pattern for the water flow. So I'm just cleaning it up now. I'm going to repaint it a bit and then uh, we'll reinstall the whole thing. And it'll be happening.